Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Dear students, you are welcome in this class. The topic of this lecture is agroecology principles. We will uh, try to understand the concepts and meaning of agroecology and learn the principles and practices of agroecology. What are the fundamental practices that farmers do in the field? We will see those also. Agroecology, the science of applying ecological concepts and principles to the design and management of sustainable agroecosystem. Agroecosystem is normally the agricultural system where farmers grow the crops. Biodiversity, the variety and variability among living organisms and the environment in which they occur. The richness of the mix of elements and the connections between those elements that sustain the system as a whole. Biomass, the total weight of living or recently living matter derived from animal, animals and plants, often referring to plant biomass, which includes all the components of plants, that, that is stem, leaves, bark, flowers, etc. Carrying capacity, represents the point of balance between reproduction potential and environmental resistance that is the maximum population of a species that a specific ecosystem can support indefinitely without deterioration of the character and quality of the resource. So this is actually bearing capacity, how long and how best an ecosystem can bear its inhabitant without destroying its own system. Agroecosystem and agricultural system understood as an ecosystem. Compact plantation, it includes plants, trees and shrubs planted in a regular and systematic manner. Plants, trees or shrubs forming an irregular pattern but dense enough to permit data collection of area planted are also considered compact plantation. Consumer, an organism that ingests other organisms or their parts or products to obtain its food energy. Decomposer, a fungal or bacterial organism that obtain, obtains its nutrients and food energy by breaking down dead organic and fecal matter and absorbing some of its nutrients. These decomposers are very, very useful in any ecosystem, particularly in agroecosystem. Disturbance, an event or short term process that alters a community or ecosystem by changing the relative population levels of at least some of the component species. Diversity, the number or variety of species in a location, community ecosystem or agroecosystem. Domestication, the process of altering through directed selection the genetic makeup of a species so as to increase the species usefulness to humans. When a wild species can, uh, is brought from its wild inhabitant to a, to by the human being and then it, it is directly selected. Selections are made. This process is your domestication. Dominant species in an ecosystem, the species with the greatest impact on both the biotic and abiotic component, uh, components of a, its community in an ecosystem. Then see ecosystem. A natural entity populated by a def definable group of organisms interacting with a definable abiotic environment. Habitat, the place or type of site where species and communities normally live or grow, usually characterized by a relatively uniform portion of the physical features or by consistent plant forms. Sustainable development. 
the management and conservation of the natural resource base and the orientation of the technological and institutional change in such a manner as to ensure the attainment and continued satisfaction of human needs for present and future generations. Now the actual subject of agroecology starts. What is agroecology? Many times people consider that organic agriculture is agroecology, but that is not true. It is much and far above or far uh, away from the uh, organic agriculture. Organic agriculture can be a part of agro agroecology, but agroecology is a very big and vast subject which covers starting from a small bacteria up to the politicians, up to the pupil. We will see how is the scope of this subject. So agroecology is a holistic and integrated approach that simultaneously apply ecological and social concept. Remember the social concepts are combined with ecology and principles of the design and management of sustainable agriculture and food systems. So you need to under, understand the major keywords of this definition. One is ecological principles are applied, means you have artificial system which is your agro ecosystem and there you want to apply certain ecological cycles or natural cycle of nutrient management, insect pest management, then it is application of ecological principles to agro ecosystem or agronomy or agro production. Other is social concepts, here the people who are doing it, who are working in the field, they are also part of agroecology and people who are dependent upon this. For example, consumers, consumers are dependent, they also need food. So those who are involved with the food systems, even traders are involved with the food system, all are included in agroecology. It seeks to optimize the interaction between plants, animals, humans and the environment while also addressing the need for social equitable food systems within which people can exercise choice over what they eat and how and where it is produced. So production of food as well as consumption of food. So all aspects of food system are also part of agroecology. Agroecology is concurrently a science, a set of practices and a social movement and has evolved as a concept over recent decades to expand it in its scope from a focus and fields and farms to encompass the entirely entirety of agriculture and food system. So this subject have evolved over decades and it took time. So initially it was simple production, then several dimensions were added and, and the last one could be the uh, addition of the policy, addition of the government of a state or government of a country is also part of agroecology. You will see later how it is. Then it now represent a transdisciplinary field that includes ecological, socio-cultural, technological, economic and political dimensions of food systems from production to consumption. It is no longer possible to look at food, livelihoods, health and the management of natural resources separately. Everything is to be looked in a holistic way. Embracing systems, so system thinking is there. So thinking through holistic approaches is needed to address these complex and interdependent challenges. The sustainable agriculture and food systems is at the heart of the 2030 agenda for sustainable development. This is United Nations agenda now. By 2030, you need to achieve certain goals, which stresses the urgent need to take concerted action and pursue policies directed at transformational change. Ending poverty and achieving zero hunger. This is the top priority of the United Nations. So ending poverty and achieving zero hunger while ensuring inclusive growth, growth of everyone. Inclusive growth means it is a very justifiable growth. Everybody in the system is included in the benefits. So that is inclusive growth and sustainably managing the planet's natural resources all in the context of climate change and biodiversity loss. Uh, we know ensuing climatic changes are also affecting 
agriculture and food systems. So they are also part of agroecology with only be possible through holistic and integrated approaches that respect human rights. So thus agroecology represent an overarching and comprehensive system framework to guide public policies towards sustainable agriculture and food systems. It enhances public efficiency by fostering integrated and inter-ministerial policy design and implementation, bringing to, together agriculture and food sectors that are often disaggregated. Now agroecology wants to combine the whole chain. It actively engages different stakeholders through interdisciplinary mechanism which favor a responsible and transparent governance of resources. Now why agroecology is important, particularly these climate changes and population pressure and degradation of natural resources, so sustainability and supply of food, these are the major issues. Can we solve this problem by following agroecological framework? That is the question. So now Vagel and co-workers 2014, they identified certain problems and there are long list of problems in the world and you, you cannot count them on fingers. So first you see the forecasted increase in world population of up to 9.1 billion in 2015 according to United Nations 2009 will require a major effort to increase food production for an additional 2 billion people compared to today. Disregarding allocation problem, overproduction and food waste in some world regions, this would mean that about 30% of more food is needed at global level. So many times in many countries, developed countries, particularly in US, many people think that wastage of food is their right and they feel proud in leaving a lot of food on the plate. And also uh, some post-harvest losses also happen which are avoidable, many of them are avoidable. Thus, world agriculture is facing major challenges in producing this additional food. In addition, there has been increasing demand in the last decades to not only produce larger quantities, but to also achieve development towards sustainable agriculture, where production is simultaneously environment friendly, socially fair and economically beneficial. Uh, it is generally thought that if you want to produce that much of food, then you have to exploit natural resources and there will be unequal distribution of the food and so many problems will be there. To overcome such, uh, such issue, you need certain system that can solve that problem and agroecology is perhaps the answer. So it will be necessary to develop agricultural food production practices for all types of agriculture, be it conventional, integrated or organic agriculture. There are variety of uh, variants of agriculture in the world. In one country also, a lot of vari variables are there in production systems. So there could be conventional farming or some people call it industrial farming. Industrial farming is very, very dangerous. And in that case, you can use artificially uh, producing egg in, uh, from the poultry, birds. And they are just machines. In machines, you are producing egg. Is it good? So similarly, pigs are raised just to, just to slaughter them, just as a food item. So this we need to think. Uh, now let us see what are the 10 elements of agroecological, agroecology framework. This is actually scope of agroecology or what is the subject of agroecology. It deals with that. And food and agriculture organization has very well done this job. They have identified 10 elements after uh, struggle, uh, struggling for many years, having many symposia, meeting, and finally they concluded this subject in 10 parts. They call it 10 elements of agroecology framework. So FAO developed the 10 elements of agroecology framework to assist countries in fostering transformative change. And India is a very active member of United Nations as well as Food and Agriculture Organization. Many of you know that Food and Agriculture Organization is international umbrella organization for food and agriculture in the world and which is part of United Nations and its headquarter is in Rome, Italy. 
So, these uh, 10 elements are interlinked and they are interdependent and represent a simplified but holistic way to think about reality. They are interlinked and interdependent means the whole chain of events is there and it is holistic system. They describe essential components, key interactions, uh, emergent uh, properties and desired enabling conditions in agroecological transitions towards sustainable agriculture and food systems. The 10 elements are useful analytical tool to facilitate decision making by practitioners and other stakeholders when planning, implementing, managing and evaluating agroecological transitions. Now you see the top uh, 10 elements of agroecology and like diversity, co-creation and sharing knowledge, synergies, efficiency, recycling, resilience, human and social values, culture and food traditions, responsible governance, circular and solidarity economy. So there are uh, 10 elements you can see and all are important and let us see in brief about them what do they mean, why, why, why to understand them and how they are important in agroecology or how they are component of agroecology. Diversity is number one element. Diversification is key to agroecological transitions to ensure food security and nutrition while conserving, protecting and enhancing natural resources. This diversification is required at every scale starting from bottom up to the top. Diversification is the major key to success in all aspects of agroecology. So agroecological systems are highly diverse. From a biological perspective, agroecological systems utilize, optimize the diversity of species and genetic resources in different ways. For example, ag agroforestry systems organize crops, shrubs, livestock and trees. See the diversity of different heights and shapes at different levels of strata increasing vertical diversity. If you have variety of trees in the agroforestry system, then they will harbor or they will shelter, give shelter to variety of birds, variety of insects, variety of animals and they all are interdependent. Like intercropping combines complementary species to increase spatial diversity, means diversity in space. Crop rotations often including legumes increase temporal diversity. Temporal means diversity in time because you are rotating the crop. Crop livestock systems rely on the diversity of local breeds adapted to a specific environment. That is why government of India is giving lot of emphasis on local cows or desi cows because they have been found to tolerate bit higher temperature they can survive and they can also survive with, with less fodder. So there are certain qualities in local cows also and people are breeding uh, them. In the aquatic world, traditional fish polyculture farming integrated multi-trophic aquaculture or rotational crop fish systems follow the same principles to maximize diversity. Variety of systems are there across the world and Asia you have greater diversity. Increasing biodiversity contributes to a range of production socio-economic nutrition and environmental benefits. Number of benefits are there and I hope most of the students uh, seeing this lecture know the value of diversity, why we need it and why, why it is important. So by planning and managing diversity, agroecological approaches enhance the provisioning of ecosystem services including pollination and soil health upon which agricultural production depends. Uh, pollination is very, very important part and if you have diversity, then pollinators will also have diversity. For example, honeybee, if they do not get uh, flowers round the year, and round the year, if you do not have plant, they will, they, will they will suffer, these honeybees will suffer. So for pollinators also, you need diversity because they increase the yields of the crop. Diversification can increase productivity and resource use efficiency by optimizing uh, biomass and water harvesting. This is another dimension. Number two element of agroecology is co-creation and sharing of knowledge. Let us involve all the people, all the stakeholders starting from production up to food systems. So co-creation means creating the things together and sharing of the knowledge. 
you, you don't think that farmer does not know anything and he is he's just under having under knowledge. Don't, don't uh, behave like this because they also got some experience, they also got knowledge. Thing is that we need to interpret that knowledge in scientific way so that we can integrate their knowledge with our knowledge or modern knowledge. So, we will have rich dividends in the end. So, agro uh, agriculture innovations respond better to local challenges when they are co-created through participatory process. Participation of individuals or people should be there. Agroecology depends on context specific knowledge. It does not offer fixed prescription, rather agroecological practices are tailored to fit the environmental, social, economic, cultural and political context. The co-creation and sharing of knowledge plays a central role in the process of developing and implementing agroecological innovations to address challenges across food systems, including adaptation to climate change. Through the co-creation process, agroecology blends traditional and indigenous knowledge, the local knowledge of the people and global scientific knowledge. Let us marry these two and get the best thing out of it. Producers' knowledge of agricultural biodiversity and management experience for a specific context as well as their knowledge related to markets and institutions are absolutely central in this process. Promoting participatory processes and institutional innovations that build mutual trust enables the co-creation and sharing of knowledge. The third element is synergies. Building synergies enhances key functions across food systems supporting production and multiple services. Synergies means let us complement each other, let, let us help each other, uh, do not go energist, uh, antagonistic way, go synergistic way, increase each other's efficiency. So, that is the meaning of synergies. So, agroecology pays uh, careful attention to the design of diversified systems that selectively combine annual and perennial crops, livestock and aquatic animals. Let us everyone live freely. Uh, animals, trees, soils, water and other components on farms and agricultural landscapes to enhance synergies in the context of an increasingly changing climate. Building synergies in food system delivers multiple benefits by optimizing biological synergies. Biological synergies means uh, synergies or cooperation between the living things. Agroecological practices enhance ecological functions of these biological organisms, leading to greater resource use efficiency and resilience. The microbes which are living in soil and above the soil, they are not always harmful. harmful. They are doing wonders, they are doing great service to all kind of ecosystem. But problem is that in our agro ecosystem, their population is going down slowly, particularly due to chemical farming or other issues. So, by in Asia, for example, uh, integrated rice system combine rice cultivation with generation of other products such, such as fish, duck and trees. So, if you take uh, grow rice and you have water in East India, it happens and you can, uh, you can raise your ducks or fish in them and these ducks and fish will not harm your rice, rather they will benefit the rice. They can eat certain weeds of, of the rice plant and they can give their excreta which, which can act as a manure to the rice. So, system is, uh, they are helping each other actually. By maximizing synergies, integrated rice systems significantly improve yield, dietary diversity, weed control, soil structure and fertility. There are so many benefits and indirect benefit here is that if you grow uh, rice and fish together and people who are growing, they will also eat fish. So, they will get a kind of balanced diet, they will get proteins, fats and, and vitamins also from the fish. So, that way malnutrition can be overcome. While agroecological approaches strive to maximize synergies, trade-offs also occur in natural and human systems. For example, the allocation of resource use or access rights often involve trade-offs. Balances are to be made. To promote synergies within the wider food system and best manage trade-offs, agroecology emphasizes the importance of partnership, cooperation and responsible governance involving different actors at multiple scales. There are different scales, scale at the soil, 
स्केल एट द प्लांट लेवल स्केल एट द वेदर लेवल स्केल एट द पीपल लेवल गवर्नमेंट लेवल देर आर मैनी स्केल्स इन द एग्रो इकोलॉजी नाउ द फोर्थ एलिमेंट ऑफ एग्रो इकोलॉजी इज इफिशेंसी एफिशेंसी ऑफ द रिसोर्स इम्प्रूवमेंट इज नेसेसरी इनोवेटिव एग्रो इकोलॉजिकल प्रैक्टिस प्रोड्यूस मोर यूजिंग लेस एक्सटर्नल रिसोर्सेज एफिशेंसी इन द सिंपलेस्ट टर्म इज आउटपुट डिवाइडेड बाई इनपुट सो इफ यू वॉन्ट टू इंक्रीज आउटपुट देर देर मे बी टू वेज वन इज दैट कीप द इनपुट कॉन्स्टेंट एंड गो ऑन इंक्रीजिंग द आउटपुट अदर वे टू इंक्रीज द आउटपुट और और यू कैन डू रिड्यूज द इनपुट एंड देन द वैल्यू एफिशेंसी विल इंक्रीज सो एफिशेंसी कैन बी इंक्रीज सो इन दिस केस अल्टीमेटली इफ वी आर इंक्रीजिंग द एफिशेंसी दैट मीन्स वी आर सेविंग द रिसोर्सेज सो इंक्रीज रिसोर्स यूज एफिशेंसी इज एन इमरजेंट प्रॉपर्टी ऑफ एग्रो इकोलॉजिकल सिस्टम्स दैट केयरफुल्ली प्लान एंड मैनेज डाइवर्सिटी टू क्रिएट सिनर्जीज बिटवीन डिफरेंट सिस्टम कंपोनेंट्स फॉर एग्जाम्पल ए की एफिशेंसी चैलेंज इज दैट लेस देन फिफ्टी परसेंट ऑफ नाइट्रोजन फर्टिलाइजर नाइट्रोजन इज यूटिलाइज बाई द क्रॉप एंड फिफ्टी परसेंट गोज वेस्ट सो इफ वी कैन इंक्रीज द एफिशेंसी टू सिक्सटी और सेवेंटी परसेंट दैन वी कैन सेव लोट ऑफ फर्टिलाइजर एंड नॉट जस्ट फर्टिलाइजर वी विल सेव द एनर्जी बिकॉज प्रोडक्शन ऑफ फर्टिलाइजर आल्सो रिक्वायर एनर्जी सो दैट वे वी कैन इम्प्रूव द एफिशेंसी ऑफ द सिस्टम एग्रो इकोलॉजिकल सिस्टम्स इम्प्रूव द यूज ऑफ नेचुरल रिसोर्सेज स्पेशली दोज दैट आर एबंडेंट एंड फ्री एज सोलर रेडिएशन एटमोसफेरिक कार्बन एंड नाइट्रोजन सो दीज आर गिफ्ट फ्रॉम द नेचर एंड वी कैन यूज दीज रिसोर्सेज वन वे टू मेजर द एफिशेंसी ऑफ इंटीग्रेटेड सिस्टम इज बाई यूजिंग लैंड इक्वलेंट रेशियो आई होप दैट यू आल्सो अंडरस्टैंड वाट डू वी मीन बाई लैंड इक्वलेंट रेशियो सो इट इज इट एल ई आर कंपेयर द ईल्ड फ्रॉम ग्रोइंग टू और मोर कंपोनेंट्स दैट इज क्रॉप्स ट्रीज एनिमल्स टूगेदर विद ईल्ड फ्रॉम ग्रोइंग द सेम कंपोनेंट्स इन मोनोकल्चर सो एल ई आर कैन टेल एस द प्रोफिटेबिलिटी ऑफ द सिस्टम द फिफ्थ एलिमेंट ऑफ एग्रो इकोलॉजी फ्रेमवर्क इज रिसाइकलिंग मोर रिसाइकलिंग मीन्स एग्रीकल्चरल प्रोडक्शन विद लोअर इकोनॉमिक एंड इन्वायरमेंटल कोस सो रिसाइकलिंग आल्सो सेव्स एनर्जी एंड इट मेक्स द बेस्ट यूज ऑफ अवर रिसोर्सेज नथिंग इज वेस्ट इन दिस वर्ल्ड सो वेस्ट इज ए ह्यूमन कंसेप्ट इट डज नॉट एग्जिस्ट इन नेचुरल इको सिस्टम नेचुरल इको सिस्टम रियली नथिंग इज वेस्ट एंड इफ यू थिंक दैट इट इज ए वेस्ट दैट कुड बी अ रिसोर्स ऑफ फॉर अदर सो बाई इमिटेटिंग नेचुरल इको सिस्टम वी कैन कॉपी वी कैन लर्न फ्रॉम द इको सिस्टम ह्यूमन बींग्स हैव लर्न लॉट ऑफ थिंग्स फ्रॉम द इको सिस्टम लाइक हाउ मैन मेड द एरोप्लेन ही मेड द एरोप्लेन बाई सींग ए बर्ड फ्लाइंग so he made aeroplane of similar structure likewise there are so many cycles so many things in the nature we can learn from nature and after learning that we can apply into the artificial systems or agro ecosystem so that our system also comes closer to the natural system so by imitating natural ecosystem agro ecological practices support biological processes that drive the recycling of nutrients biomass and water within production systems thereby increasing resource use efficiency and minimizing waste and pollution also this natural cycle ecological cycle if we follow in agro ecology then they can reduce the pollution crop livestock systems promote recycling of organic materials uh, everybody knows it that you get dung from animals that can be used in agriculture or crop production or that dung can be used to produce the biogas similarly the plants plants uh, that are grown on the manure can be used as a fodder plant so they will give fodder to the animal so it is dependence of each other and recycling delivers multiple benefits by closing cycles so there are two kind of cycle one is closed cycle other is open cycle in open cycle you are losing the the resources and in closed cycle it is uh, um, it is uh, there is no loss of the resources they are within the home so in closed cycles are generally closed cycles are preferred so recycling delivers multiple benefits by closing cycles and reducing waste that translate into lower dependency on external resources increasing the autonomy of 
producers and reducing their vulnerability to market and climate shocks. The sixth element of agroecology is resilience. Resilience means you are, you are strong enough to tolerate or to bear any disturbance. That is your simple dictionary meaning of resilience. So, it uh, enhanced resilience of people, communities and ecosystem means this is your tolerance. Uh, ecosystem is key to sustainable food and agricultural systems. Diversified agroecological systems are more resilient, more tolerant. They have a greater capacity to recover from disturbance. If you give some disturbance to them, they have the capacity to come back to the original position. However, we try to make them resistant. You make disturbance, there is no effect. Then this is resistant. However, it is not possible. It is not that easy to, to get it. So, recover from disturbances including extreme weather events, drought, floods or hurricanes, they come, nature gives us, but in the, in the end we stand up. But if we follow agroecological approach, then effect of this system will be less, first thing. Secondly, the recovery time will decrease. So, and to resist pest and disease attack. By maintaining a functional balance, agroecological systems are better able to resist pest and disease attack. They are better adapted to bear the biotic interference. Resilience continues. Agroecological approaches can equally enhance socioeconomic resilience. Through diversification and integration, producers, here means growers or farmers, Producers reduce their vulnerability should uh, a single crop, livestock and species or other commodity fail. By reducing dependence on external inputs, agroecology can reduce producers' vulnerability to economic risk. Enhancing ecological and social socio-economic resilience go hand in hand. After all, humans are an integral part of ecosystem. Now, seventh element is human and social values. Protecting and improving, improving rural livelihoods, equity and social being, well-being is essential for sustainable food and agricultural systems. Agroecology places a strong emphasis on human and social values, such as dignity, equity, inclusion and justice, all contributing to the uh, improved livelihood dimensions of the sustainable development goals. The sustainable development goals are very, very uh, important. Each student should learn it because all governments are now focusing to achieve these sustainable development goals suggested by or proposed by United Nations. So, it puts the aspirations and needs of those who produce, distribute and consume food at the heart of food systems. Agroecology seeks to address gender inequalities inequalities by creating opportunities for women. Globally, women make up almost half of the agricultural workforce. They are involved in dairies, they are involved in production, all sorts of operations, they are there. Mostly in, in Asian countries also, you will find uh, women contributing to agriculture. But they also play a vital role in household food security. So, their job is to, to manage the household also. Uh, dietary diversity and health as well as in conservation and sustainable use of biological. At every stage of agriculture and food system, women are there. Choice of food in the home, what should be cooked today, what, what vegetables or what dal or system food we will have. So, women have role in the decisions of the food system also. Agroecology can help rural women in family plan, farming, agriculture to develop higher levels of autonomy. You need to involve women at all the levels in agricultural production as well as food systems. So, agroecology is based on a different way of agricultural production that is knowledge, uh, knowledge intensive, environment friendly, socially responsible, innovative and which depends on skilled labor. Meanwhile, rural youth around the world possess energy, creativity and a desire to positively change their world, what they need to uh, support and opportunities. So, Energy and enthusiasm, uh, enthusiasm of the youth should be directed in right direction so that uh, we get the best out of them. As a bottom-up uh, bottom grassroots paradigm for sustainable rural development, agroecology empowers people to become their 
own agents of change, their own master. Now, eighth element of agroecology is culture and food tradition. So, you cannot separate the culture from food traditions and they are part of agroecology and in the, uh, in the name of modernity, we should not forget our cultures because the food choice also depend upon the culture. Some people, people like X kind of food, some religion says Y kind of food, lot of issues are there in the world. So, by supporting healthy, diversified and culturally appropriate diets, agroecology contributes to food security and nutrition, nutrition while maintaining the health of ecosystems. Agriculture and food are more components of human heritage because since the very first day human came on earth, he looked for agriculture, he looked for food. Hence, culture and food traditions play a central role in society and in shaping human behavior. Agroecology seeks to cultivate a healthy relationship between people and food. As people and ecosystem have evolved together, cultural practices and indigenous and traditional knowledge offer a wealth of experience that, that can inspire agroecological solutions. So, for example, in India, we have lot of traditional knowledge related to food. If you have any stomach problem, our, our senior, our parents will say, okay, take some curd, take some dahi. There are solutions of uh, illness, sickness through the food. So, for example, India is home to estimated 50,000 indigenous varieties of rice bred over centuries for their specific taste, nutrition and pest resistance properties and their adaptability to a range of uh, conditions. So, India has greatest diversity of rice in the world, having 50,000 different varieties in, in our country, starting from black rice, red rice, yellow rice, what not, uh, basmati rice, kala jeera, kala namak, so many things are there. I, no, no one can count, but they are uh, many times they are related to religion also. Uh, in India, some Hindus, they put uh, rice, roli uh, your, on, on your forehead. The, the food is, is your religion. So, it is involved in religion also. When marriages happen, the brother throws some rice uh, above his sister in the, during the marriage ceremony. We use this. So, culinary traditions are built around these different varieties making use of their different properties. Responsible governance, uh, government have to be responsible also. So, agroecology forces the government to be part of it. So, sustainable food and agriculture requires responsible and effective, effective governance mechanism at different scales. Now, India we have food distribution system, what is that? It is just ensuring food security to the people through the government. But government need, need to check whether it is effective, whether it is having good efficiency. Are people satisfied with this public distribution system or not? So, government is also part of this agroecology. So, agroecology calls for responsible and effective governance to support the transition to sustainable food and agricultural systems. Transparent, accountable and inclusive governance. Transparency should be there, accountability of government should be there and inclusive government governance mechanism means everybody should be stakeholder are necessary to create an enabling environment that supports producers to transform their systems following agroecological concepts and practices. Successful examples include school feeding and public procurement programs. Government have some schemes in India also. Midday scheme, what is that? This is also agroecology. So, market regulations allowing for branding of differentiated agroecological produce and subsidies and incentives for ecosystem services. Territorial landscape and community level governance such as traditional and customary governance models is also extremely important to foster cooperation between different stakeholders, maximizing synergies while reducing or managing trade-offs. Uh, the last element is a circular and solidarity economy. It reconnects producers and consumers and provides innovative solutions for living within our planetary boundaries while ensuring the social foundation for inclusive and sustainable development. Agroecology seeks to reconnect producers and consumers through a circular and solidarity economy that prioritizes local markets and supports 
local economic development by creating uh, virtuous cycles. Agroecological approaches promote fair solutions based on local needs, resources and capacities creating more equitable sustainable markets. Strengthening short food circuits can increase the incomes of food producers while maintaining a fair price for consumer. This is important. In agroecology, uh, agro it is utmost important that neither consumer is overcharged and nor, uh, pro nor producer is underpaid. He also get good money. Consumer also get uh, his uh, uh, products in optimum money. Currently, one third of the food produced is lost or wasted, failing to contribute to food security and nutrition while exacerbate, exacerbating pressure on natural resources. A lot of wastage is there, already discussed. And in some countries, there is fine. If you leave your food on the plate, you have to pay some money for that. You should remember so how, how much important it is. The energy used to produce food that is lost or wasted is approximately 10% of the world's total energy consumption, while the food waste footprint is equivalent to 3.5 gigaton carbon dioxide of greenhouse gas emissions per year. Now see these 10 elements are interactive in nature. So they interact with each other and if you are interested you can go to food and agriculture organization. They have one uh, exclusive website dedicated for agroecology. And I must also thank uh, Food and Agriculture Organization because resources of all the resources of Food and Agriculture Organization are free to world public. Anybody can use them for teaching purpose, for learning purpose. So therefore, I also thank uh, Food and Agriculture Organization for uh, allowing this literature. Now see the agroecology and the sustainable development goals. The United Nations has already fixed 17 sustainable development goals and how agroecology can contribute to achieve those goals we are going to discuss. So the 2030 agenda for sustainable development calls for a new agricultural approach to ensure sufficient, safe and nutritious food respecting human rights. FAO members have a common vision for sustainable food and agriculture and agroecology is a key to response to guide the sustainable transformation. Means the message in brief is that you have 17 sustainable development goal and how they can be achieved. They can be achieved by several means, several methods, several approaches and strategies by the governments. But agroecology also has a role to achieve part of these goals. It is not that agroecology will achieve all the 17 goals, but it will help to, uh, to achieve certain goals or part of certain goals. Now first goal of uh, SDG, Sustainable Development Goal, this is the acronym for uh, Sustainable Development Goal, so I will refer sometime SDG. So first is no poverty, end poverty in all its form everywhere, no poor person should be there and no in no form. So family farming, herding and artisanal fisheries and aquaculture, that is integrated farming system, provide livelihood for many of the world's rural poor. Agroecological approaches support food producers in reducing production costs, translating into greater income, economic and stability and resilience. So you can see how this agroecology can contribute to goal number one. Goal number two is zero hunger. End hunger, achieve food security, and improve nutrition and promote sustainable agriculture. So agroecological systems optimize the use of local and renewable resources and knowledge. This enables agricultural production systems to harness ecosystem benefits such as pest control, pollination, soil health, and erosion control while ensuring productivity. So it is explained how agroecology can contribute in uh, reducing the hunger or in zero hunger. Number three goal is ensure healthy lives and promote well-being for all at all ages. It is not that younger children are not given good food or old age people are not uh, cared. So by minimizing the use of potentially harmful agrochemical inputs, agroecology reduces agriculture's negative effect on both human and environmental health. 
the fourth goal is quality education ensure inclusive and equitable quality education and promote lifelong learning opportunities for all so many times what happen if you are rich people your children will go to the best of the school and if you are poor that will go to the poorest school so ecology is against this let us have some uh, acute uh, quality education in equitable way so agroecology depends on knowledge adapted to local context by food producers and other actors it delivers relevant and practical knowledge through empowering peer to peer systems enhanced with the knowledge of formal scientists fifth goal is gender equality achieve gender equality and empower all women and girl this is very important goal women have a central role in agroecology they are often custodians of healthy and traditional diets and are key players in sustainable food systems from the home to the field to the market beyond agroecology has a potential to advance women's right self determination and autonomy ensure availability and sus uh, sustainable management of water and sanitation for all so this is clean water and sanitation goal agroecology prevents surface water and ground water pollution and contamination it provide promotes uh, practices that are efficient in water use enhances soil water retention so it helps in the clean water this agroecology the next goal is affordable and clean energy ensure access to affordable reliable sustainable and modern energy for all the eighth one is uh, decent work and economic growth promote sustained inclusive and sustainable economic growth full and productive employment and decent work for all agroecological approaches create new decent rural employment opportunities for youth and women the increased resilience of agroecological production systems helps to better maintain existing jobs supporting rural livelihood and communities ninth uh, goal is innovation and infrastructure build resilient infrastructure promote inclusive and sustainable industrialization and foster innovation 10th uh, one is uh, reduce inequalities reduce inequality within and among countries agroecology gives priority to those to the most marginalized and vulnerable sectors of society rural women youth family farmers and indigenous people agroecology has the potential to address the inequality of the food system by providing locally based solutions to specific contexts and territories the 11th goal is sustainable cities and communities make cities and human settlements inclusive safe resilient and sustainable by promoting a territorial approach to development agroecology encourages the development of integrated plans for urban and rural development with urban areas recognizing the multiple benefits that sustainable landscapes can provide them and reconnecting producers and consumers to shorten value chains and increase resilience and number 12 is responsible uh, consumption and production and ensure Uh, sustainable consumption and production patterns agroecology enhances diversification to achieve sustainable and healthy diets and food and nutrition security agroecological food systems have proven in many local contexts to be exemplary providers of high quality nutritious healthy and adequate diets preserving and promoting local food traditions so therefore this uh, wealth goal also have uh, can be uh, partly met by agroecology agroecology can play a very important role in achieving this goal also next is 13 goal is uh, climate action so take urgent action to combat climate change and its impact agroecology helps mitigate against climate change and its impacts it reduces the emission of greenhouse gases by promoting integrated production systems that are less dependent on energy from fossil fuels and that is store and and fix carbon so it is very environment friendly system agroecology by uh, 
promoting diversified and integrated production system, agroecology facilitate resilience and adaptation to climate change. Next is uh, 14 num number life below water. So conserve and sustainably use the oceans, seas and marine resources for sustainable development. In aquatic systems, the ecosystem approach to fisheries, EAF, ecosystem approach to fisheries and to aquaculture, EAA, demonstrate an e agroecological approach. The ecosystem approach ensures that the management of living resources applies an integrated approach to fisheries within meaningful boundaries, taking into account knowledge and uncertainties in the biotic, abiotic and human components. The 15th goal is life on and land, protect, restore and promote sustainable use of terrestrial ecosystems, sustainably, uh, sustainably manage forests, combat desertification and halt and reverse land degradation and halt biodiversity loss. So agroecology works with local communities, food producers and other actors to prevent land degradation and restore degraded areas. Agroecology helps to conserve and sus uh, sustainably use and value the biodiversity and ecosystem services that underpin food production. Next, 16th goal is peace, justice and strong institutions. Promote peaceful and inclusive societies for sustainable development, provide access to justice for all and build effective, accountable and inclusive institutions at all levels. Agroecology supports strong and inclusive producers organizations that enable the sharing and co-creation of knowledge, solidarity, representation of their concerns at policy level and responsible governance. 17th and last uh, sustainable development goal is strengthen the means of, uh, this is a partnership for goals, strengthen the means of implementation and revitalize the global partnership for sustainable development. Scaling of agroecology calls for increased cooperation between productive sectors, social actors and countries. Now see the consolidated set of 13 agroecological principles. So these were actually elements or kind of principles or components of agroecology uh, of, of, uh, that can be helpful to achieve the sustainable development goals. And you can see some consolidated or agroecological principles. They are compiled by Vagel and co-workers in 2020 from France. So you can see here they propose, first principle is recycling. Recycling is very, very necessary. Preferentially use local renewable resources and close up as far as uh, possible resource cycles of nutrients and biomass should be closed cycle as far as possible. Input reduction, reduce or eliminate dependency on the purchase input, let us produce them right on the farm. Soil health, secure and enhance the soil health and functioning for improved plant growth particularly by managing organic matter and enhancing the bio biological diversity in the soil. Animal health, ensure animal health and welfare, maintain and enhance biodiversity of species. Uh, number six uh, principle of agroecology is synergy. Enhance positive ecological interaction, synergy, integration and complementarity among the elements of agroecosystem, may be animals, crops, trees, soil and water. Economic diversification, diversify own farm incomes by ensuring that small scale farmers have greater financial independence. Then co-creation of knowledge already covered, social values and diets and fairness. Fairness is very, very necessary. Support dignified and robust livelihoods for all actors engaged in food systems, especially small scale food producers based on fair trade, fair employment and fair treatment. Uh, 11th is connectivity, 12th is land and natural resource governance and participation of all actors, all people is very, very necessary. Now see important practices in agroecology, different categories of agro agroecological practices. So you have seen many principles of agroecology, uh, just now you have seen 13 principles. Now what are the important practices 
in agroecology that are followed. So, at field scale, you have tillage management. In tillage, you have variety of options, what kind of tillage is practiced. In crop fertilization, you have certain field scale practices and then uh, irrigation. In irrigation, you follow the practices that increase the efficiency of uh, irrigation. And then you have uh, at a cropping system level, you also got uh, several uh, components like uh, crop choices, spatial distribution and so on. So you have uh, to manage these cropping systems and then finally landscape scale, management of landscape elements. So at each level or at, at each scale, you got certain practices, you need to follow them. Potential of agroecological practices, potential of agroecological practices for the next decade in relation to their integration in today's agriculture. You will see on the next slide what is the potential. Most practices have so far a low integration in today's agriculture and only low or medium potential for the next decade to be more broadly implemented. In contrast, organic fertilization, reduced tillage, drip irrigation, biological pest control, cultivar choice and split fertilization have already medium or high integration levels in today's agriculture and medium or high potential for the future. So, there are number of practices of agroecology. Some have been adopted by the people, some ha have medium chance uh, and some have high chance. So, you can see this potential of agroecological practices integration in today's agriculture. On x-axis, you have three, uh, three things that is low, medium and high. This is potential of agroecological practices. So, low is your agroforestry and then integration of semi-natural landscape elements at a landscape scale, direct uh, seeding into living cover crops or mulch that is your uh, conservation agriculture, integration in semi-natural lands and so on. So, uh, these are low and see medium, in medium you have organic fertilization, reduced tillage, drip irrigation and biological and in high you have uh, split fertilization cultivar. So, as you move from left to right, the adoption rate is low, means first the farmer will adopt your split fertilization cultivar choice, uh, the next in the ranking is biological pest control and drip irrigation, reduced tillage and the third one and, and uh, it, it you need lot of convincing the farmer, convincing the community and people to adopt these low. Now, of course, there are number of advantages, number of merits of agroecology like sustainable management of natural resources. Our natural resources are preserved, the efficiency of our resources is improved, the biodiversity is improved, biodiversity is very, very necessary to sustain the production, to keep our land live and so on. Some economic resources, everybody will get uh, good income, good profit and share in the, in the money coming from the society and maximizing use of uh, uh, local materials and durability of the farming production potential and economic activity. In social aspects, there are certain advantages like improving food safety in terms of quantity and regularity. So, everybody will be ensured of the food, there will not be hunger, there will not be malnutrition of the people and also the food will be safer because many times our conventional foods are having lot of pesticides and residues in them which is not healthy food, but food produced from the agro ecosystems through agro following the agroecological principles will be safe from the pesticides. Improving products, nutritional and taste quality. It has been observed through many stu studies that if you produce food from uh, if, uh, uh, following the principles of agroecology, then it is having higher nutritional value. Particularly antioxidants are generally more in food compared to the conventional food. And these antioxidants improve our health system. Uh, health of the human being can be improved by this. Increase autonomy for producers by reducing dependence on input uh, suppliers. And revenue generated, invested in social development, profitability of know-how and local uh, resources 
techniques adaptable to different contexts. And there may be certain drawbacks also, or I can say there may be few limitations of the system also. The less immediate effect of certain uh, protection products compared to compared to artificial products, uh, additional space may be required in order agroecological practices, or there may be some few exceptions or few limitations of the system. So overall, you can see if you follow, if you adopt. Agroecology definitely it is environment friendly, it promotes good practices in the environment, it reduces greenhouse gas emissions, clean energy promotion and so on, economically efficient everybody will get ensured income and promoting human development. In this case uh, emphasis is given on gender equality. So overall from all perspective this system is very very holistic and sustainable and everybody will get sufficient food better air, better water, better energy and better things. So hope you liked this lecture. Thank you very much.